Now you all are wondering why we're we talking about this particular formula and how this formula is going to be used to actually solve a specific problem. First is we're going to be able to derive this formula and this formula will enable us to actually determine a specific variable and the key variable here is the C star and you're wondering what are all these variables here C star, what is R, what is T and what is M and we know that in this particular case C star is actually different from C bar and C and all these variables we're going to look at it not only in terms of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve but also how to derive this particular formula using various terms and also variables and how this will actually lead to some use of this particular formula in a specific problem. So please don't forget to subscribe to this particular channel to get more info involving biochemistry, physical chemistry and all kinds of chemistry and maybe other physics concepts. This is part of the channel DMSI and it's truly a pleasure to actually have you all in this particular space and let's dive into this. So in this particular video here we're going to derive this formula C star is actually equal to the square root of 2RT over M. Now looking at this we can actually determine C star to be indeed the probable or the most probable speed of a particular molecule in a specific gas. So let's draw back to what we talked about concerning the various formulas and how this is actually determined using the Bartman distribution curve and looking at that we can actually see that in this particular formula we actually start with the curve and the curve indeed actually tells us there is great insight into the relationship between the specific speed and also that of the relative number of molecules and the relative number of molecules actually shows the relationship which is f at v and that's actually shown as 4 pi all in a bracket m over 2 pi rt or to the power of half which is square root so in this case when you have your y with respect to the x we actually see that the x is actually represented as the speed and so therefore we can actually determine the speed to be v equals all square root of 2 rt over m which is kind of similar a little bit to some of the interesting formulas that we're going to derive from it so one is this this curve actually has a particular bell curve form and as a result we actually can find the most probable speed to be at the top which is the maximum in this particular curve and right next going from left to right which is at the higher speed is where we have the mean speed and the higher speed is actually called the root mean squared speed. On our previous video we talked about the root mean squared speed, we talked about deriving the mean speed and in this video here we're going to look at how to determine the most probable speed of this particular molecules in a gas. So in this particular case here what we see is that these variables they do depend on a couple of things, mainly temperature and that of the molecular mass of that particular molecule and in this particular part here our goal is to be able to derive the formula for the most probable speed and the solution is actually as follows step one is to do the derivative of the function f v where f at v is actually equal to the fraction of molecules in a gas with a specific speed we can actually then move ahead to introduce this particular function or condition that for step two we need to set a derivative for our function to zero so our derivative which is the f of v over dv is actually equal to zero so therefore we can actually step further by determining what f at v is and f of v is derived from our previous video which is equal to four pi in bracket m over 2 pi rt all to the power of 3 over 2 times v squared multiplied by e to the power of negative m v x squared over 2 rt and now in this case here we need to put this particular equation here into our derivative when it's equal to zero equation and therefore we're able to actually get our expression which is the all into bracket our f at v 
and that is actually going to be taken out and put in this particular place is uh, 4 pi in a bracket m over 2 pi rt all to the power of 3 over 2 multiplied by v squared multiplied by e to the power of negative mv power of squared over 2 rt divided by dv this is all equal to zero so take note that 4 pi times m over 2 x rt to the power of 3 over 2 is actually a constant and this constant will be moved to the front and to be actually important in making our particular derivative to be focused mainly on the velocity and the specific exponent function so in this particular case here we can actually determine our derivative of our particular function which is almost like a product rule mixed with some other exponent derivative functions and as a result of that we're able to actually go ahead and determine our specific expression which is 2v multiplied by e to the power of negative m v x to squared over 2rt plus negative 2mvx over 2rt multiplied by e to the power of negative mvx all squared over 2rt multiplied by v squared. So once we have this taken care of, we are going to actually put this into our now general equation which is set to equal to zero so therefore we can actually evaluate and since we are evaluating we know that our constant is actually going to be moved over to the other side which means by dividing both sides by that constant it means that constant is taken out of this particular equation and what we're left with is a derivative function where once our negative two cancels out with two and we move that side of the equation to the other side where zero is we actually have our specific sign changes to a positive therefore we actually have 2v multiplied by e negative m to the power of negative m v x to the power of 2 over 2 rt and this is equal to m rt multiplied by e to the power of negative m v x squared over 2 rt multiplied by v squared so take note here that our e function actually cancels out on both sides and we have 1 v on the left side cancelling out and we are left with two v's on the right side of the equation therefore we can actually arrive at our specific formula equation to be 2 is equal to m over rt multiplied by v squared now by rearranging and making v the subject of the formula or this particular equation we'll be able to actually get v squared is equal to 2 rt over m now our next step is to perform the square root both sides and therefore our v which in this case is going to represent it as c star is actually equal to the square root of 2rt over m now this actually is how you're able to derive the formula for our specific most probable speed of molecules in a specific gas and this is actually important because one our most probable speed of a molecule is actually dependent on the temperature and indeed the molecular weight of that particular molecule it could be nitrogen oxygen or all kinds of molecules that you can come across and this molecule exists in gas it could be air for example and so that is how this is actually being done and it's applicable to this particular curve which shows the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and indeed the most probable speed is actually the peak the maximum in this particular curve and it has the least velocity compared to our mean speed and that of our root mean squared speed and so this leads to application where we're going to be asked to determine the most probable speed of nitrogen gas at temperature which is 
25 degrees Celsius. And so in this particular case, you need to take note that our uh, temperature is going to be measured in Kelvins. And by so doing, once you add 25 degrees Celsius to uh, 273, we actually get our Kelvins to be equal to 29 eight kelvins and on the other side we actually have our r to be 8.314 and for the molecular weight will be in kilograms per mole therefore if nitrogen here in this case is existing as a diatomic it means that we are going to be able to have our molecular weight to be in this case 28.02 and as a result of that we'll be able to multiply that by 10 to the power of negative 3 and therefore introducing all those variables into our equation will give us our answer for our most probable speed of nitrogen gas. Take note here that this number is actually less than the mean speed of nitrogen gas which is what we determined on our previous video and on our previous previous uploaded video we actually determined the root mean squared speed of nitrogen gas which is the highest in terms of its value compared to the other values that we got from our most recent videos so that's about it for this particular video hope you're able to understand this particular concept of the most probable speed and how it is placed on the maximum distribution curve and also how you can derive this particular formula and finally how to apply it in a case scenario involving nitrogen gas so that's about it for this particular video hope you found this really informative please hit the comment down below let me hear your thoughts about this and many more by that way i can talk to you all soon stay smart as always and believe in yourselves